Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how to create uh, machine learning powered applications with uh, Google's ML Kit. Uh, before starting, let me introduce myself. I am Bishra. I am an Android engineer at Dev Business, which is uh, a London based company. And also, I quite like uh, being a part of uh, developer communities. I, I'm one of the organizers of uh, GDG London, and I am one of the VTM uh, London lead currently. And you can find me with uh, Busra Deniz uh, Twitter handle. Today, I, I'm going to mostly talk about the Google's new uh, shiny tool, uh, ML Kit. It's basic capabilities and how to use custom uh, TensorFlow Lite models with uh, MLKit. But before starting, I, I just want to ask how many of you are, are you familiar with uh, Android or iOS development? Oh, everyone. <laughs> cool. <laughs> how many of you are, uh, are machine learning developer or interested in machine learning? Cool. Quite. Okay. Uh, before starting, I am not also. Uh, I am not a machine learning expert. I am an Android engineer who has an interest in uh, machine learning, but with very limited uh, machine learning knowledge. I am still trying to catch up with this area. Uh, so let's start talking about MLKit. But before starting, I would like to uh, have a little bit uh, zoom out, uh, talk about the machine learning. Because every day we hear about machine learning. We hear about AI, deep learning. We, uh, we uh, when we open the Twitter, we read that, OK, Google launched a new AI tool. Facebook is launching a, a new uh, machine learning tool. There are so many different terms out there and it may be a little bit confusing so i would like to uh, start with the definition of the uh, machine learning what is machine learning uh, what uh, machine learning is the a subset of ai it, an application of ai but what is ai ai is the study of how to train computers so so that the computers can do the things uh, as good as people do and machine learning is application of ai and it provides the ability to see system learn from data and improve from the previous experience. And as you may have already not, uh, noticed, it's quite, quite popular uh, topics nowadays. Everyone is talking about machine learning, AI. And as a developer, I am also interested in, uh, I'm also excited uh, to see some new tools, new, uh, new machine learning approaches. So, uh, 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 but I'm, uh, as an Android developer, I'm mostly interested in bringing the machine learning into the R applications. I'm mostly interested in uh, combining machine learning and the mobile experiences. But when we to uh, think about uh, combining machine learning and mobile applications, it can be uh, a little bit challenging uh, because of the some reasons. Uh, the first challenge about uh, machine learning and mobile is the team. Uh, machine learning is a completely different discipline and mindset from, uh, from uh, application development. And it requires uh, knowledge, uh, machine learning experience, and uh, it's uh, really different than uh, learning a mobile uh, framework. It's a huge research area, and I don't think we can sit and ramp up in t uh, two weeks, three weeks. It's, it requires a lot of effort and a lot of uh, time to, uh, to learn and uh, gain some experience. And of course, you can, uh, you can take the advantage of uh, open source uh, models, but finding uh, machine learning uh, models which are uh, well trained and super accurate for your uh, problem is, uh, can be really hard. And if you have any uh, production uh, experience, you know that at some point you have to touch it. You have to fix something. You have to uh, change it. You, uh, you have to maintain it. So definitely, you, you have uh, some uh, machine learning knowledge and experience. And most probably, you will have a separate machine learning team. The second challenge is the data. Finding a good data in, in the good quality and the good quantity is, uh, can be re uh, really hard. Uh, if, as a company, if you think you have the, uh, enough data, you are the lucky one. But for the most of the uh, ML cases, the finding data is uh, really hard. And if you have the data, cleaning data, and uh, playing with this data, uh, converting into the uh, format you need, uh, you need it is, uh, can be really hard if you are 
if you don't have any experience with uh, machine learning. The third part is the mobile optimization. Of course, we are talking about mobile. Uh, there is no possibility to, uh, not to talk about the uh, battery, uh, battery consumption, application size, application performance. And running a machine learning model on uh, limited res uh, resources like mobile devices can be really tricky because most of the uh, machine learning models are trained in uh, uh, cloud platforms, and they are really complex and big, uh, big uh, for uh, mobile devices. So you need to optimize your machine learning model for mobile. And this optimization is also another research area, and Google is also working on it to be able to provide some optimization tools for, uh, for developers. And the last part is the production. Okay, you have the team, you, uh, you, you have data, and you, let's say you build your application, but how are you gonna maintain it in the production? How are you gonna upload, uh, upload upgrade, uh, rollback uh, uh, of uh, your machine learning model? You need to think about uh, data, and you need to have some strategies about it. Are you gonna bundle this machine learning model into your APK, or are you gonna host it in on a uh, cloud services and implement the download upgrade uh, logics yourself? So you need to uh, think about the production uh, and maintenance. And as you can see, these are not uh, specific problem to me or my company. I think these are very common problem for every company which wants, uh, wants to uh, jump in a uh, machine learning career. So these are very common. Google came up with a solution in last Google I.O. and they announced a, a ML kit. Uh, what is a ML kit? A ML kit uh, uh, brings Google's machine learning expertise to uh, mobile developers in a really easy to use uh, package. It's coming with Firebase. Uh, Firebase is, I uh, I believe most of you are familiar with Firebase since you are a mobile developer. And it uh, currently comes with a uh, collection of uh, predefined uh, capabilities they, uh, that are uh, commonly required in, uh, in applications. And we are able to uh, implement uh, these cases with, uh, 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 regardless of whether we are familiar with uh, machine learning or not. And it's still in beta, it's not uh, generally available yet. And how does it work? When we look at the ML kit, Google is not doing something really new uh, with ML kit. They just uh, put their existing uh, machine learning uh, tools together and create uh, a package uh, for mobile developers. Uh, it, ML kit runs on the existing Google uh, machine learning technology, so it's not new, but since it's coming with Firebase, it's really, really easy to use and it's uh, more accessible for mo uh, mobile developers. Okay. What does uh, MLKit offer to us? Uh, what are the advantages of uh, MLKit for, uh, for mobile developers? The first thing is that it's cross-platform. It's supported on iOS and Android, and I believe it's very important to have uh, the same um, machine learning model in, uh, in both platforms. So you, you need to uh, maintain only one machine learning model. And the Second thing is that is it's easy integration. MLKit is uh, coming with uh, Firebase, which is uh, very well known and widely used tool uh, by mobile de developers. And according to last Firebase summit, one, uh, 1 1.5 million applications are actively using Firebase uh, monthly. And to be able to integrate MLKit in your application, on Android side, you just need to add a Gradle dependency in your application, and that's done. Uh, MLKit API is available in your application. And for iOS, I think it's also <laughs> easy. I'm not sure about uh, on iOS side. And <coughs> the cool thing uh, with uh, MLKit is that it, it uh, supports some common machine learning cases, uh, cases and it provides some API for them. It uh, it's provides ready-to-use API for them. So you don't have to think about the machine learning, uh, uh, machine learning specific stuff like, like uh, building, training, or optimizing your mo uh, models about these uh, six cases. For these six cases, you just need to call the, uh, you just need to use the uh, MLKit API and wait for the uh, result that's done. Uh, you don't need to think about the uh, other ML specific problems. But you can think that, is that all? 
uh, only, uh, can I use only six uh, cases? No, a market also uh, gives another flexibility to us. If your case is different than for those uh, supported uh, six use cases, you can always use the, your own TensorFlow uh, machine learning model in, uh, with a market. But of course, to be able to use it, you need to build and train and uh, optimize this machine learning model yourself. So you, you need some uh, machine learning experience in this case. And uh, Melkit provides two different API for us. It's on-device API and in-cloud API. On-device on API is designed to work fast, uh, but of course, since it's running on mobile devices, it, uh, it uh, works with lower accuracy. And it has an advantage, you can use it uh, as offline, you don't need any network connection for it. And it has another advantage uh, from user pr privacy point of view. You are not sending any, any information outside of mobile device, so you are just running on device. And in cloud platform, since it it's, uh, uh, facilitates the Google platforms, it's, of course it provides higher accuracy, but since you need a network connection, you have latency in this case. So to be able to, if you want to use uh, ML Kit uh, in real-time applications, you, you need to use the on-device uh, API. And only landmark recognition case is not supported on device. For the other ones, it's, uh, you can use it on uh, devices. And you cannot use barcode scanning, face detection, language identification, and custom models uh, in cloud. And opt it's optimized for mobile. The, as I mentioned, the optimization machine learning uh, models for mobile can be really tricky. And for those uh, supported cases, uh, for the barcode scanning text recognition for the uh, six cases, it's already optimized for yourself. So it comes for free. But to, uh, for uh, custom models, if you want to use custom uh, TensorFlow models with MLKit, you need to optimize your uh, model first and then upload it to a Firebase. And the last advantage of the ML kit, it, it decouples machine learning and mobile application processes. And as you can see, you can have two, uh, two, separate, uh, uh, two separate teams, and one team can, a machine learning team can work on the uh, models, machine learning models, training and building uh, the models, and in the meantime, application team can focus on the mobile specific features and release their work to Google Play Store, and machine learning models release their work to Firebase, and uh, the all integration between Firebase and the uh, mobile application will be done by Firebase and uh, uh, MLK, so you don't need to ha uh, think about the, this integration, and these, these two uh, separate teams can work uh, independently without blocking each other. Okay, we have seen the all, uh, all advantages of the uh, MLK, and let's uh, have some uh, deep dive uh, into uh, MLK and talk about the base API for uh, these uh, six uh, cases. Uh, before starting talking about one by one, I would like to give the uh, implementation path, the, uh, give the uh, big picture uh, of the implementation path because uh, you will see it's very easy, straightforward, and it's the same for the all cases. So I don't want to give the same code again and again for each, uh, each use cases. I will provide it just once, just to uh, give an example, and then uh, it will be same for the rest of the cases. So the first thing is the integrating SDK. Uh, we are adding our uh, Gradle dependency in your Gradle file and that's done. The, uh, the next step is preparing our input data. And uh, to be able to work with a uh, call the MLKit API, you need to prepare your data as Firebase Vision image. And you can create a uh, Firebase Vision image with, uh, uh, with bitmap, byte buffer, byte array. It provide, uh, it, we have five different ways to be able to create a uh, Firebase Vision uh, image uh, instance. And after preparing this data, data you need to apply uh, uh, machine learning model uh, to your this prepared data, you need to call the re relevant API and wait for the response. That's all. Th this, this is the whole implementation part and it's very uh, easy and straightforward. Okay, let's start with the text recognition. What is text recognition? Text, with the text recognition API, 
<coughs> we can recognize the text in uh, Latin base uh, language and it returns Firebase vision text and it's supported on device and uh, in cloud. On device is free, but it works with only Latin characters, so it's limited. In cloud, it's not free. <coughs> you will be charged after 1,000 users per month. And it, of course, it's, uh, it works a broad range of languages and spatial characters. When we look at the, uh, before looking at the uh, API, what, uh, what is the benefit of text recognition? It, it brings the uh, searchability, uh, editability, uh, accessibility, servability, translatability into your, or into your uh, application, into our, uh, our documents. And where can we use text recognition in the mm, banking industry, legal in industry, uh, healthcare industry? In these industries, we we highly, uh, heavily depend on the paper paperwork, and we can make them uh, digitalized with text recognition. And when we look at the API structure, we have two different text recognizer for online and offline usage. For, uh, and we have only one API call, uh, process image. And when we call it, we, uh, we are getting Firebase vision text uh, object. It provides the whole text and the list of text blocks. And text, uh, text blocks provides the uh, list of text lines. And text lines provides the uh, list of words. So you can, you can go deep uh, until you have uh, you you access the individual words with text rec recognition. And let's look at the code example. The first thing is that we need to create a detector. And to be able to get the uh, detector, we are, uh, we are calling the Firebase Vision and on-device text recognizer. If you want to use the on, uh, in cloud text, uh, document recognizer, you, we need to call the uh, get cloud document text recognizer API. Uh, you can provide some options here. You can provide some language hints if you want, but it's not mandatory, it's optional uh, uh, options. And after creating detector, we need to prepare our data. And uh, I'm creating my uh, data from bitmap and calling the processing image. Uh, we have a detector, we have input data, and we are calling the process image and waiting for the success and the fail, uh, uh, fail cases. And as you can see, it's all, it's just 10 lines of code and it's pretty uh, straightforward. When we run uh, this code on these images, we have the almost same uh, results on device and in cloud uh, API. It could detect the old all texts in this uh, image. And for this one, on the left side, it's a screenshot of a digital book. On the right side, it's the uh, output of the MLK text, uh, text recognition API. And it, uh, as you can see, it could detect the all text blocks, line, uh, all characters uh, successfully. And some tips for uh, text recognition uh, performance. If you are working on the Latin characters, you need to provide uh, at least 16 to 16 pixels uh, for each character. But if you are working with Chinese, Japanese, you need to provide 24 to 24 pixels for each character. Uh, yeah. And with the latest uh, update on MLKit, uh, we are able to detect the uh, language of the uh, given text uh, given text now, and it supports uh, 103 languages. It's, it can identify Arabic, Bulgarian, Greek, Hindi. Uh, it can detect the non-Latin uh, languages as well. Okay, the second case is uh, with MLKit is uh, image labeling. With the image labeling, we can get the all entities in given image. It returns a list of Firebase uh, vision uh, label. And it has the same policy with text recognition. It's free on device, and but it can work with 400 label, labels in common categories. It's pretty uh, limited. Uh, with cloud, uh, it can detect 10,000 plus labels in uh, a broad range of uh, categories. And again, we have two different detectors. We have cloud and the 
uh, device uh, detector, and when we call the API, we are ha uh, we are getting uh, Firebase Vision label with the confidence of the results and label and the entity ID. With this entity ID, uh, ID it's a string. You can use the Google Knowledge Graph API, and you can get more information about this label. And when I'm not gonna give the same code for this one, so I'm just uh, uh, giving some examples of uh, image labeling. As you can see, on for this image, you can see the differences between on-device and cloud API. Cloud provides much more, uh, many more uh, results from uh, than on-device API, and it pr provides with the higher accuracies. Uh, it uh, it can detect the all type of the. Uh, photos, uh, footballs, American football, Greek football, Canadian football. It provides a broad range of uh, results. Uh, it's my photo from the previous uh, conferences. And on device, for this uh, photo, on device API, it could detect that it is event and it, uh, there is a, a musical instrument uh, in, uh, in this photo. But in cloud, it could detect that it's public speaking. Uh, there is a communication, speech, product, presentation, drink. Uh, it said there is a whiskey, but I was not drinking a whiskey. There is no whiskey <laughs> in this photo. <laughs> okay. Landmark recognition. The third case uh, is the landmark recognition. Uh, with landmark recognition API, you can get the uh, very well known uh, landmarks uh, in the given image, and it returns a list of uh, results. Uh, it provides the bounding box of the landmark. It provides confidence, entity, ID, and landmark uh, label, and the list of location. And it, since it's, it, it's not supported on device, you cannot use it offline. You need always network connection to be able to use uh, landmark recognition API. And on for this case, it could detect it's Milan Cathedral with uh, 0 0.7. I think it's lower than I expected. <laughs> and for pyramids, it's, it could detect it's uh, Giza pyramids with the, uh, with very high uh, confidence, 0 0.95. Okay, let's look at the barcode scanning. When I so that MLKit is supporting barcode scanning, I was surprised because I was thinking that it, uh, uh, barcode scanning is mostly about image processing, not uh, nothing about uh, uh, machine learning. It was interesting for me. I couldn't see why we need machine learning for barcode scanning. But then I realized that I'm forgetting about the no noisy images, poor lighting conditions, accumulations, reflections, and low resolutions. My previous project was a grocery application and we had a uh, barcode scanning, and we had a very similar issue, and we were trying to apply machine learning in this project as well. Uh, in some lighting conditions in these stores, we couldn't uh, read the uh, barcodes. We, uh, we uh, get the wrong uh, barcodes from the product. So in these cases, we need uh, machine learning for barcode scanning, and I think Okado uh, is, uh, is another grocery uh, product in UK, they, they apply uh, machine learning in their uh, barcode scanning process, and they publish a really good uh, blog post about it, how they uh, improve their barcode scanning process with uh, machine learning. It was really interesting. And with barcode scanning uh, API, we can get the all information, address, barcode format, email, uh, photo, SMS, everything. And it supports one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and QR code. And before using MLKit barcode scanner in your application, just check the support to barcode formats because we also tried to use MLKit in our grocery application, but uh, it doesn't support all formats, uh, all barcode, uh, uh, barcode. So just check before using it. And the most interesting uh, use case with uh, machine learning um, uh, ML kit uh, for me is the face detection. With the face detection, you can get the all uh, all faces in the given image and uh, identify some key facial uh, features. You can get the uh, locations of the features, contours of facial uh, feature. Fa uh, facial features, recognize facial experience, track, you can track the face, and uh, you can use it in the, uh, in the video, uh, in the real-time applications. 
Uh, we are getting a lot of information with the uh, face detection. We are getting the bounding box, rotation of uh, uh, face, left eye open probability, right eye open probability, smiling probability, uh, coordinates of the left eye, right eye, right cheek, left cheek, lots of uh, information. And to be able to use uh, face detection, you need to configure your uh, detector before creating your detector. And you can <coughs> set your uh, performance as fast or accurate. If it is fast, it works fast with lower accuracy. But if you uh, set uh, it as accurate, it works uh, s slower, but with uh, higher accuracy. And you can set the uh, landmark mode, all landmarks or, or non landmarks. And classification mode, all classification mode, or smiling uh, classification, eye open uh, uh, classification. And you can provide minimum face sizes. And you can set the uh, contour mode. And you can enable or disable tracking. If you, if you, are using it in video uh, video application, real-time application, you need to enable tracking if you need to uh, track the uh, faces. And after configuring your uh, detector, you just need to get your detector, prepare your data, and apply it uh, with the uh, relevant uh, API method, and you are getting the all a bunch of information about uh, this uh, given image. And when I run this code, on this image, it could detect all faces with the uh, written uh, features. Uh, it could detect four faces, uh, their smiling probability, right eye open probability, the all features. And it is t uh, tested on uh, Pixel 2. When I run this image with this configuration, with a create mode, uh, all landmarks, all classification, all contours, it took 2.1 seconds. But when I configure it w with fast mode, all landmarks, all classification, without all contours, it took uh, 0 0.9 seconds. So you need to be careful about uh, configuring your detector while using uh, face detection with MLKit. And this is the recommended uh, configuration for real-time applications. And for these ones, <laughs> the, it's very obvious that the left baby is not smiling uh, with the 0 .0, 0, uh, 0.07 uh, confidence. And the, it couldn't detect the right uh, cheek of the right baby. It's now, <laughs> it couldn't. And you can get the all contours of the all uh, uh, facial features. You can get the contours of your no nose, um, eye, eyebrows everything. And some performance tips for fa uh, face detection. If you want to use face detection, you need to provide 100 to 100 pixels for each phases. But if you want to get the face contour as well, you need to provide 200 to 200 pixels for each uh, phases. And it's not recommended to use, use the all features at the same time. It's not recommended to face contour detection and classification landmark detection at the same time. You need to pick one of them because it, it affects the performance a lot. And using face mode is the recommended. And uh, always consider images at a lower resolution, not try to use uh, a high resolution uh, images. It, it has a huge impact on uh, performance, especially in the real time applications. Okay. We have seen the all uh, cases supported by MLKit, uh, and we don't need to think about the M uh, machine learning uh, specific stuff with, uh, while using them. But they are very limited. There are just six cases, and we need uh, we, uh, we need some other uh, capabilities in our application. And what if my case is not uh, one of them? One of the uh, those uh, six pro, uh, pro supported cases. 
MLKit uh, supports uh, custom models. MLKit uh, gives the flexibility of using any custom pre-trained pre TensorFlow line models to cover the specific uh, specific requirements. Uh, you need to prepare your TensorFlow light models and you need to upload it to Firebase and then uh, integrate with the MLKit. So the communication is uh, between the Firebase and the, uh, your your application. And in the next releases, in this case, you need to you need to have machine learning uh, experience because you need to build, train uh, your uh, model, and you need to optimize it. Optimization is really tricky. You can use uh, you can lose some uh, functionality of uh, your uh, machine learning model. So uh, Google is all, uh, they did the demo at the last uh, Google I/O. They are planning to launch an optimization tool in Firebase. So when you uh, create your uh, TensorFlow model, you just need to upload it and then you can uh, optimize it with the uh, provided uh, tools. It's not available yet. It's, uh, they just show a quick demo and they said they are planning to launch it in Firebase, but we haven't heard it yet, anything about it. Uh, I am talking about the TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite here, so I just want to uh, give a quick uh, definition of the uh, TensorFlow for those uh, who don't know uh, uh, TensorFlow. What is TensorFlow? It's an open source machine learning uh, uh, framework for research and production. It's developed by Google Brain team and it's now open source it's, and I think it's getting uh, very popular in machine learning industry. And I say TensorFlow as well. What is TensorFlow? It's the light version of uh, t TensorFlow. It's uh, optimized for the mobile and the uh, embedded devices, and it can run on everything, on GPU, CPU, it, yeah, uh, and it runs uh, on, on iOS, Android, and the other operating system. And I am closing this uh, TensorFlow uh, TensorFlow part, and uh, of course, I after tried the, uh, these uh, supported uh, ML cases, I was also curious about the how to how to use a custom model with MLKit, uh, and I tried to build a very very simple uh, application with uh, a custom model, and to be able to uh, use the custom model uh, in your application, this is the implementation path you need to apply. You, first, you need to train your uh, TensorFlow model. You need to uh, convert it uh, to TensorFlow Lite, and you need to upload it to Tens uh, uh, Firebase and uh, implement the integration code in your application. And I try to. Uh, is it working? Yeah. Uh, I try to develop this application with MLKit. It's very basic. It's just uh, handwritten digit uh, recognition. And I use this uh, uh, my NIST uh, data set. Uh, it's open source. You can download it and you can build your application. And when I did my uh, research, of course, my first step was the hardest part for me because I don't know how to build a machine learning model. So I did some research and I have seen there is a Keras. Uh, it's a high level API to build and train deep learning models and it's very user friendly. It's very easy if you are familiar with uh, uh, Python. And you, c you can use the Google uh, Minist uh, model. Uh, Google shares the Minist model uh, in their official GitHub page. You can use this one. Or you can use the other one the, the developed by Tiang uh, Sing Lee and shared on the, uh, GitHub. I had three options in this case. And since it's the recommended one, I went to, uh, with uh, Keras. I tried to build my application, uh, my uh, model with Keras. Uh, you can find my notebook in these uh, links. I'm not going to give the all details because I am still not sure uh, why I apply some uh, steps. Uh, I have very limited uh, machine learning uh, knowledge. I tried, uh, I built my uh, TensorFlow uh, model and exported it and converted it to TensorFlow Lite model. Google also provides a tool to be able to convert your TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Lite model. You just, uh, I just used the TensorFlow Lite, uh, TensorFlow Lite uh, convert and when I try to integrate it, as you can see, it couldn't detect anything. But during build, it says the accuracy is around uh, 98. But when I tried 
to, uh, when I finished the integrating and testing it, it couldn't detect anything. So I went on the, my second option, Google Minis. I followed the Google guideline on uh, GitHub and exported my model and converted into a TensorFlow Lite model, the same steps, and I got this one. I don't know why uh, it is happening. I contacted some Google uh, developer exper uh, experts and some TensorFlow uh, developers and also Stack Overflow. I have to no answer for it, but as far as, far as I can understand, during the conversion uh, between TensorFlow to TensorFlow Lite, you might lose some operations uh, during this conversion. All operations are not supported in, uh, on mobile, so uh, it might happen because of this one, but uh, I'm still not sure. So I had only one option left, simplified minutes. I used the uh, guide by Tiang Singli in this link, and I followed all steps, and I think I managed to build it, uh, make it work. It, I, I could see the, uh, it's working. It can, it could detect everything. Okay. Uh, okay, I have the model uh, in this step, so uh, the next step is the uploading uh, your uh, custom model into uh, to Firebase. You can upload different uh, models, you can use different uh, custom models in your application, uh, different and multiple models. After uploading your model, you just need to integrate the uh, custom uh, model API in our application. To be able to uh, use the custom models in your application, uh, if you are using, if you are bundling uh, uh, the custom model uh, in your application, you need to uh, define a local model source uh, for local model uh, manager. If you want to download it to, uh, from uh, Firebase, you need to, again, you need to create a remote source for uh, Firebase uh, model manager, but uh, you need to define some uh, conditions uh, for download and upload, uh, uh, update uh, operations. For initial condition, I didn't give any uh, condition. In any case, it should be downloaded. But for update conditions, I put it, it should be, uh, it should have Wi-Fi connection, it should be uh, charging. And after uh, defining the conditions, I just create uh, my cloud source and register to uh, Firebase Model Manager. And the rest of the stuff is pretty similar with the previous ones. Uh, we have one, uh, one uh, additional step uh, to be able to use custom models in the application. After that, we just need to create our interpreter, create our input, and run it, and wait for the success and the response. The, these uh, steps are uh, very similar with the previous ones, but we have one additional step before this one. You need to register your local and uh, remote uh, sources. And happy end for me. I could manage to make it work, but it was really interesting. Um, experience for me because it's very easy application and I have the data, I have lo uh, lots of uh, examples, but it was painful. Yeah, it didn't work uh, with the first option and the second option. Uh, I, I tried to uh, optimize something, I tried to understand the som uh, something, so as a mobile developer, uh, diving into uh, machine learning can be really tricky. Okay. And this is the last thing I want to share with uh, MLKit. I, I built this uh, application as a demo, very quick demo. I used the object detection model, uh, custom model, and I think I built it in two hours, but I think it shows uh, that what we can build with MLKit. Uh, it's the intention of the, this uh, demo is the providing a visual assistant for blind uh, people. It just uh, detects the objects and uh, says that okay, there is some, uh, there is people on the left hand side, there is car on the uh, right hand side. It's very dummy. You will see it, but I think it's quite. It shows that MLKit is quite powerful to be able to uh, create this kind of applications. Do we?
text to speech is very dummy. It's, uh, it uh, repeats itself a lot, but I think it, it was really, really straightforward and it was really easy and I, have, I built this application in two hours uh, with MLKit. So yeah, it, sh it shows how it, it's a powerful uh, tool for mobile developers. Okay, what is next for MLKit? Uh, according to the presentation by Dong Chan, yeah, he's MLKit tech lead at, uh, uh, at Google, and he gave a presentation at the last Android Dev Summit, and he said that they are, of course, they are planning to improve the performance of the existing uh, use cases, but they are also planning to add a smart reply API into uh, uh, MLKit, and they are adding more, more, much more features uh, from different areas, like especially uh, related to speech, and they uh, they are also providing to this custom model optimization tool uh, in Firebase. Uh, I hope it's still beta. I I think they it will be generally available maybe in the next I/O. They they may announce it, but uh, we are really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. That's all uh, I can talk about MLKit. Thank you very much for listening and uh, attending.